828. Haha. <laughs> I want you to grab this scripture with everything in you. Go back and get it if it's what you want. If it's in your dream goals, if it's things you want to get done, don't let your age stop. It took a lot to get there. But I was amazed. I'm like, wow. Hi, guys. Welcome to my channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Ruth Muntali and I make faith based content for young people. So if a young person is dealing with it, if it affects your life somehow, then I'm talking about it. Consider me your internet big sister. And to my returning subscribers, thanks for always being here. Thanks for the support. I love to see you each time in the comments and I appreciate you so much. So yeah, we are on This Is 32 and I shared my first eight lessons and today I'm going to share another four. Guys, you see me when you see me. Lord shedding is Lord shedding. <laughs> So I'm able to record when I'm able to record. I'm not going to give it so much structure, but you will get your This Is 32 Complete Lessons in January. And I have something exciting for February. Hey, anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the video. We kick it off with lesson number nine, and that is you are a villain in at least one person's story. I hate for the person to break it to you. <laughs> But you are not nice in everybody's story. You're not a good person in everybody's story. In at least one person's story, you're a villain. You did something bad to the person. They probably consider you bad. They probably don't like you, right? So you need to make peace with this. Don't be a people pleaser per se. Like, don't try for everybody to like you, number one, because it's impossible. But in this case, I'm talking about certain interactions you had with people so there could have been people in your past that you've hurt and they've run with that opinion of you that you're a bad person or you're having a bad day and you know you talked anyhow and they've run with that opinion of you that you don't talk well or you're rude something you're a villain in at least one person's story so what to do number one take ownership be responsible when you did hurt somebody or you did something that was not nice come on apologize try to make amends with that person and then grow from that situation when you do something where you like know that you know what i didn't do well try and grow from that situation and not repeat it it reminds me of a certain time <laughs> i was having a bad day you guys someone stole money from my bag <laughs> oh i was so upset i hate being stolen from i know everyone hates being stolen from so i was telling this story to one of my friends right then some random man in the street just starts commenting and saying, no, but if you did what? I looked at him. I'm like, who invited you in this conversation? Guys, uh, I, I didn't really say bad stuff, but I let him know that. What is he doing in the conversation? And my friend told me, come on, that was mean, right? Now, I may never meet that person again. And as far as that person is concerned, <laughs> I'm not nice because of what I did. So what I did do, I didn't get a chance to apologize because I didn't meet the person again. But what I did do decide is to say the next time I'm in a bad mood, I'm upset, I'll ensure not to transfer that aggression on somebody else. So yeah, you're a villain in someone's story. Learn from it, grow from it, apologize where need be. When there's an opportunity to apologize, please do apologize. And yeah, let's keep it pushing. Lesson number 10. I saw this one on uh, Instagram. Um, love it. So close friendship should have mutual vulnerability so the person goes on to say close friendship should be layered in five ingredients which are loyalty sacrifice vulnerability honesty and mutual respect and today my emphasis is going to be on vulnerability now i heard this again in a certain video the person was trying to differentiate transparency and vulnerability and they said transparency is the ability to share what you've been through after you've overcome it while vulnerability is the ability to share while you're going through it right so with being transparent and i do consider myself a transparent person you're able to share like past you know occurrences or situations that you went through and you overcame them and i think it's so important in the christian space for most of us to be transparent when you have an audience like you like i do i think it's very very important you're able to share oh i battled with this so that people can relate to you it's very difficult to listen to a person who is portraying themselves as perfect as perfect quote unquote 
that apostle paul was he still shared how he was religious right so it's very easy to relate with a person that is being transparent about certain struggles they've had however vulnerability is not something you share with everybody i do believe that it's for close friendship that's why i tagged it with close friendship when you realize that your vulnerability is one-sided please take out time to reconsider the closeness or the intimacy of that friendship you cannot be the only person that is sharing intimate details about yourself sharing stuff when you're going through it like you're going through a hard time you share with this friend you open up and they don't share their side with you do you get what i mean i do consider a conversation before this rearrangement of closeness i do consider having a conversation it happened to me i was going through a certain uh season in the spirit of transparency guys when i experienced a problem in friendship i had the tendency to punish the rest of the friendships not deliberately but let's say a close friendship ended i end up being very close off from all the friendships because i begin to feel like if this person could do me like this what about these people? It's just a matter of time. So when I was going through such a phase, I didn't share something very important with two of my friends. And then I ended up sharing it later. And my friend called me out on it. She said, it is somehow that you're sharing this with us now, you know? And I recognized, yeah, that wasn't cool. So I just explained to them. They're able to understand. I said, I'm sorry, guys, but this is what I had been going through. So I ended up... um taking steps back from all my friendships and that's something i know i have to work on guys we just had a power cut mid shoot so if you see any difference in quality or whatever my ring light is no longer working so i'm working with natural lighting so as i was saying when you realize that the vulnerability is one-sided lovingly call this friend of yours and tell them you don't appreciate that it's one-sided if they don't change or they're not willing to change then yeah we need to reconsider the closeness in your life and for people who say i'm not just a sharer i'm not vulnerable that is actually not natural yes you don't have to be with everybody but with people you call your close friends your best friends you're gonna get married your spouse it will demand vulnerability so there has to be mutual vulnerability if it's one-sided do reconsider the friendship all right lesson number 11 Romans 8, 28. Ha <laughs> ha. I want you to grab this scripture with everything in you. The Bible says, now we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Goodness. I want you to believe the scripture. I want you to meditate on it until it becomes imprinted in your entire being and your whole thinking system revolves around the fact that everything not some things not three quarters of the things in your life but all things work together for good i've always lived by this scripture but i believe that in this in the year of 31 it really just became imprinted some more there are certain things i really wasn't happy about at the beginning of the year and god knew i wasn't happy about them but later i was just like god thank you god you really declare the end from the beginning you really see things when i can't see them because all things and i mean all things will work together for your good so i want you to run with this scripture i want you to believe it i want you to chew on it put it on your screensaver put it on your bedside table whatever i want you to believe that all things do work together for good it doesn't matter what happens in your life whether it was your fault it wasn't your fault if you're in a better place, come on for things that could have been your fault. You could have even experienced the consequences, but I want you to believe that God is going to turn those things around for your good. Our last lesson for today is go after your goals or dreams, even if you believe that they're no longer in your age bracket right so i know ideally the time to start up your career is in the years of 18 19 20 going there you know we most likely go to university in those years so if you're doing a four-year degree program you'd be done by 22 23 24 if you're doing a six-year degree program you should be done by 25 you know they're about sometimes life happens sometimes life is going to serve you some lemons right sometimes there's battles against your life and this is another thing i'm going to share in some upcoming lessons certain things are very supernatural and we don't understand what's going on but today i came to tell you 
if you have a dream to get a certain degree, if you have a dream to get a certain thing done, and you're at this point, maybe at 30, and you're just like, there's no way I'm going back to university at 30. I'm not going to be with the 18-year-olds. <laughs> Honey, the truth is, four years later, you're going to be 36. Oh, 34. Whether or not you went for that degree. So why don't you just go for it? If it's something you want, starting a business, doing whatever, don't allow age to stop you. I get it. Ideally, there's an age when certain things should be done. I'm not ignorant to say, hey, it wouldn't have been great to be done with a certain thing at uh, 25 or 24. But this is what life has handed you, right? Things happen in your life. You couldn't get that degree. Now you're seated. You're 30. You're 32. You're 35. Heck, you're 40. Go back and get it if it's what you want. If it's in your dream goals, if it's things you want to get done, don't let your age stop you. And you're going to be amazed at how powerful your brain is. You'll still be able to grasp so many things, even things you thought you wouldn't grasp. So that's what I learned. I took that step and I'm doing really great. It took a lot to get there. But I was amazed. I'm like, wow, look at that. So yeah, I'm encouraging you to do the same. When I start a business, go back to school, get a master's, get a PhD, whatever it is that you've dreamt of doing, you know, go after it. Don't believe that your age is going to be a limiting factor. So yeah, guys, that's today's lessons. I hope you've been blessed. Please write down which lesson resonated with you the most today. And I'll see you when I see you. Because as you can see, Zesco, which is our power supply, is doing the most. I'll see you next time. I will see you in the next video. <laughs>